as the whole team used to come. We used to come before the job retreat started. And uh, by the time everyone started coming, we had to kind of uh, get our energy back because we spent so much energy trying to prepare for everybody to come. So I can totally relate to all of you being very, very busy for the next few days until everybody comes. But we did have a little secret, something that we used to do. Just before everyone would be ready to come, we would all take, and I believe it was like an hour, we would take an hour or two and just go and do something that we really just like to do. For me, it was going to the lake and just sitting at the lake. It, we usually would have very beautiful places as we go to. So there is a river here, it's a little bit on the back, but you can find it. And there's water, you can see water. So take some time and just be, be with yourself. It's actually quite uh, rejuvenating. So we're reading from the first canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. We're reading Canto 1, and we're reading a very famous verse from the prayers of Queen Kunti. So this is uh, somehow, this is how we've invited to share with you today, this morning. Um, so I'm just going to say the Sanskrit, and then we can just repeat after. Ratim Udvahat Aurava Ratimuva tat adha gange vaham udavati twai unto you may may aliyarishaya unalloyed mati attention madupati o lord of madu asakrit Continuously. Ratim. Attraction. Udvahata. May overflow. Adha. Directly. Ganga. The Ganges. Eva. Like. Orka. Flows. Udavati. Udavati. Down to the sea. The translation, Shiva Prabhupada's translation and purport. O Lord of Madhu, as the Ganges forever flows to the sea without hindrances, let my attraction be constantly drawn unto you without being diverted to anyone else. Purport. Perfection of pure devotional service is attained when all attention is diverted towards the transcendental loving service of the Lord. To cut off the tie of all other affections does that does not mean complete negation of the finer elements like affection for someone else. This is not possible. A living being, whoever he may be, must have this feeling of affection for others because this is a symptom of life. The symptom of life, such as desire, anger, hankerings, feelings of attraction, etc., cannot be annihilated. Only the objective has to be changed. Desire cannot be negated, but in devotional service, the desire is changed only for the service of the Lord in place of desire for sense gratification. 
The so-called affection for family, society, country, etc. consists of different phases of sense gratification. When the desire is changed for the satisfaction of the Lord, it is called devotional service. In the Bhagavad Gita, we can see that Arjuna desired not to fight with his brothers and relations just to satisfy his own personal desires. But when he heard the message of the Lord, Shimad Bhagavad Gita, he changed his decision and served the Lord. And for his doing so, he became a famous devotee of the Lord. For it is declared in all scriptures that Arjuna attained spiritual perfection by devotional service to the Lord and friendship. The fighting was there, the friendship was there, Arjuna was there, and Krishna was there. But Arjuna became a different person by devotional service. Therefore, the prayers of Kunti also indicate the same categorical changes in activities. Srimati Kunti Devi wanted to serve the Lord without diversion, and that was her prayer. The unalloyed devotion is the ultimate goal of life. Our attention is usually diverted to the service of something which is non-godly or not in the program of the Lord. When the program is changed into the service of the Lord, that is to say, when the senses are purified in relation with the service of the Lord, it is called pure, unalloyed devotional service. Shimati Kuntadevi wanted that perfection and prayed for it from me. So please repeat, O Lord of Madhu, O Lord of Madhu, as the Ganges forever flows, to the sea, without hindrance, let my attraction. Let my be constantly drawn unto you, unto you, without being diverted, without being diverted to anyone else. So this is the prayers of Queen Kunti, and uh, Kunti has given us so many, many instructions um, in how to have a relationship with Krishna, how to understand the Lord in our lives. So, Kunti Devi, uh, many of you know this pastime, she's one of my favorite personalities in the Srimad Bhagavatam for many, many reasons. One of them is, is she's such a diverse personality. She has had so many different kinds of experiences. And with all the experiences that she shares with us, one of the most uh, important one of the most important experiences that she has is to remind us of who we are actually developing a relationship with. All the things that we do, why do we do them? All the experiences that we have, why do we have them? And all the things that we do in this world, what is the purpose of them? So here you are. You're all gathered here to uh, prepare for guests. And so there's so much love and knowing in all of your hearts, getting ready for everyone to come. At the same time, as Clinton teaches us, simultaneously in doing the service for others, it's very important to remember ultimately who we're serving. Ultimately. Who are we serving? And so in this in this uh, text, there's so many there's so many points because Kunti is just such an elevated personality in a woman's body, extremely elevated. 
at the same time, as you know the past times, she's, she's shown us, she's taught us how to uh, accept different kinds of difficulties in our lives. She's taught us how to accept these difficulties and at the same time be grateful and thankful for the Lord for those difficulties. And to always remember that our lives are like a triangle. It's like a triangle. Krishna is always at the top of the triangle. There's you and there's whatever else is going on. Whether whatever nice point that Kunti makes in this purport is that um, this point of affection. She says to cut off the tie of affection does not mean complete negation of the five elements. And so basically what Kunti is saying is Prabhupada is helping us to understand that we cannot cut affection from other people. It's just not possible. It's not possible. Our, our triangle is made in such a way that it's Krishna, it's us, and it's other activities or experiences in our lives that includes other people. That's, that's, that's how we're set up as human beings. And in order to have relationship with Krishna, we need to have relationship with those other people. And in order to have relationships with those other people, it requires that we are able to give and receive affection. And now how do we do that? How do we give and receive affection? So Kunti's making it very, very clear that this is truly an important aspect of us being peaceful, being happy in this world. Krishna uh, is explaining to us in the Bhagavad Gita, um, there's a verse from Taram Yagya What is the ultimate in becoming peaceful? What is the ultimate? We're all looking, wanting some peace, wanting some happiness. We're gathered together to do service. And as we do the service, <laughs> we are having expectations of how the interactions are to go within, with, with the team, with the group. It may not always go like that. Because that's, uh, that's what Kunti teaches us. That oftentimes there are difficulties. And how we deal with those difficulties is what's really important in our lives. So how did Kunti, how did she deal with all these difficulties that she faced throughout her life since she was a young girl? So sometimes as, a, as an emotional therapist, we talk about trauma, and we say trauma of uh, a young person affects how they behave as an adult, according to psychology, we say like that. If a child is uh, affected with some trauma at a very young age, then that trauma will affect the behavior that they have with other people. Remember that triangle? It shows at the top. So when we interact with another person, then there is always uh, some experiences that we're bringing and we're also going to offer to that other person. Some of those experiences may have been very beautiful experiences in our life. Some may not. Some may come from some other lifetime. And so we bring that into our association with others or into our connection with others. As we bring that, it may bring some affection or sometimes it may not. Sometimes it may come in a way of someone needing more attention or more care than someone else. Because maybe in the childhood trauma, those uh, caring affection may not have been there. But Kunti, she taught us, she taught us that at a very young age, she was faced with what we would probably call a trauma in these times of having a child, right? At a very young age, she had a child. And she had to live with that 
awareness or that understanding or that experience. And then you learn later, she gets married and, you know, she then has, in marriage, she has a co-wife in this age. It's like, who can, who can think of that? How many of you ladies can accept it? And not, not, not her. In this age, nobody wants to hear that because, every, because everybody thinks it's just about me. Just about me. But Kunti, she was, she showed that example. She had a poet who she loved very dearly. She had so much affection for Maji. So much affection. And then she showed us how, in order to please her husband, she had these five children. And what did she have to go through to get these five children? You know? So the point I'm making here is that Kunti taught us that yes, in life, as we try to make connection with others, there will always be some calamity. And she talks about calamities, difficulties, challenges in the, some of in the previous verses. So why did I choose this verse today? Because when ladies come together in order to offer services, oftentimes as they connect with each other, and men, I don't want to make it just ladies, and men also. Men just have a different way of expressing their concerns. It's a different kind of behavior than ladies. So, Kunti, she showed us what was her behavior with all of these difficulties that she was facing. Her behavior was always to look to Krishna. That was what she did. Ultimately, she didn't think, oh, why is Pandu, her husband, having so much affection for Maji? She didn't think like that. She thought, how oh, wonderful. I have somebody to help me, somebody to help me take care of the kids, someone I can also nurture. She was thinking like that. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we are to think like that. And just sharing what's in scripture, what is scripture, and how the mood, the mood, and the attitude of ladies in that time, right? But because this comes from a certain kind of purity in heart. It comes from a purity of seeing another person as simply someone that is wanting to love Krishna, wanting to love God. This, is, this was Kunti's mood. So Kunti taught us how in these kinds of inter interactions with ladies, it's very important to have affection. It's very important. Because Maju was totally different than Kunti. She was kind of a little bit, you know, like a lot of energy. She was very beautiful. She was younger. She was like, you know, she had the, the, the attention of her husband. She she was quite different when she was more like fixed and not that much she wasn't, but when she was like the foundation, the cornerstone of the relationships with all of these men. She was the foundation. So they were different, basically. This is the point I'm making. They were different. What was common for them, what was common in that relationship, is that they understood that they were serving the husband because the husband was serving the Lord. And they all wanted to combinedly together be servants of Krishna. And that's the triangle. We don't ever want to forget that triangle. When we take Krishna out of it, then as Prabhupada says here, and as purported, he says that the the, um, the anger and disturbances, all the different kinds of disturbances that are part of the human nature, that that comes out. So basically, the, the ugliness of, of, of our behaviors, based on, as I said earlier, some past situation in our lives, that comes out. And then that predominates the atmosphere. And that actually is forgetfulness of Krishna. Because wherever there's Krishna, 
There is joy, there is bliss, there is excitement, there is enthusiasm, there is a way of affectionately interacting with each other. This is an atmosphere that Krishna creates. And so when we're not in that type of creation, then, then somehow Krishna is missing. Krishna is somehow missing in the equation. So then we always want to ask ourselves, how do we bring Krishna? How do we bring Krishna in this environment? Because perhaps it might not be that I can make a difference. Because maybe I have my own trauma baggage that I am bringing in the environment. So how can we make an affectionate and caring atmosphere as Krishna did? The only way to do that, according to Kunti and according to all the sages and according to all that Shri Prabhupada has taught us, is that Krishna has to be in the center. Krishna, the Lord has to be in the center. In everything that we do, Krishna has to be in the center. And Kunti Prabhupada is explaining to us that because Krishna was in the center and because Kunti didn't think it's just about me, it's just about my perceptions, my assumptions, my previous way of how I think, I thought, that everything that works is only working because of me. When we think like that, when Krishna, he leaves. It's like there's a story when I used to, to do sacred time. We used to go to these vans, and we used to go all over America, and we used to sleep in the vans, and we used to take a bath in the, in, the, in the gas stations. We go to a gas station, we'll fill up a, a milk jug, a milk bottle, one of those plastic milk bottles with water. And we would find a spot, you know, and park our van and hide and bathe with that milk gallon jug of water. And then we would come back into the car. And then we would get ready for our day of distributing books. We live like that. Live like that, just like that, for years. And so, because at that time we had a mission of distributing books to Africa, so we would do that, I would do that, and then after that, after finishing doing that for, you know, a season, which was usually the summer, then I would get ready to go to Africa to distribute the books that we just try to collect the money to buy. So it was quite a huge austerity in many ways. At the same time, there was a sweetness about it. It was very sweet because the people that, the other devotees that were also distributing books, it was always such an affectionate relationship because we understood, who are we doing this for? Who are we doing it for? It's, it's, not, it's not for us. For me, I had a master's degree. I could have easily been you know, working in some, you know, place where I was very comfortable and easy and... But no, I made a choice. I made a choice that I wanted to learn more about God. I wanted to learn more about Krishna. And that required somehow, in my path, maybe it's not the path of everyone, in my path, it required that I had to do a lot of austerity to get to this place where I can start sharing a little bit. Somehow, in my karma, I had so much junk, so much stuff that Krishna said, you just got to work. You just gotta, I just got to make you keep doing things to purify you because you need purification. Yes. So, yes, I wanted Krishna. I didn't want, I didn't want to say, no, this is too hard. Look, I'm just bathing in this place. Anybody can come. And so many times we... Oh, we were so scared sometimes because it was all ladies that was doing this in the band. And so I sometimes would be like, why am I doing this? Then I would remember, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because my spiritual master did it. And my spiritual master before that did it. And before that did it. Maybe the austerities were different. But if we look at all the austerities that all of these great devotees that are now our teachers, they've all performed some austerities. 
And when they confront these austerities, they confront these austerities in a in a mood of I'm doing this for Krishna. Yeah, it's hard. It's not like you just say, yeah, it's just so beautiful and so wonderful that everything is so nice. No, it's sometimes really difficult. And sometimes our emotions are so high and so strong that we get stuck. And when we get stuck, we, 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 our ego tells us, stay there, just stay in that place. Don't move, don't move, no. Yes, you are affectionate, yeah, yeah, you are, but you don't want to feel that, no, no, no. You don't want to feel. So we stay in our stuck places. But Kunti taught us, we can't stay stuck if we want Krishna. It, it doesn't work like that. You know, if we want Krishna, we need to be in the mix of things. And we need to see all the all the different, like as Prophet explains, that sometimes, you know, when, when we are engaged in emotional service, it's like going into a room that hasn't been cleaned for a very long time. And I'm sure all of you have heard this example. And you go in that room and you start cleaning, and the dust is coming in, and you know, the walls have mold, and you gotta do all kinds of different things to clean the room. That's like how we are. You know, we, we are a room, a house, all of us, that is being cleaned. You know, as like somebody said, we're like potatoes, all of us are like dirty potatoes in a big, in a big, you know, bed, right? And you have a stick and you're like cleaning these potatoes and the dirt is coming off and it's coming, you know, it's coming off, but the whole water is getting dirty and all the potatoes are in there in this dirty water. So we're kind of like that. We're sort of like potatoes that are getting cleaned. And in that cleaning process, it requires us to be austere. It requires us to be able to understand why am I getting clean? Who am I getting clean for? Why should I even be getting clean? What is this? What is the purpose of this? We remember, right? We remember. We remember the first day that we met someone that gave us a book. And we remember somebody said, if you read this book, you're not looking for if you read this book, this book will give you some knowledge. It will, it will awaken something that's been sleeping inside of you. Oh, we met a person that was just so kind and so affectionate that we remember that person. We remember that person in our lives. And we remember, yeah, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because when someone is really having a taste of wanting the Lord, they become very affectionate. They become very affectionate. And they perform the austerity of knowing it's not about me. That's a huge austerity. Because we're conditioned to think it's about me. It's about me. I'm, I'm Krishna's gift to all of you. <laughs> That's what we think. I'm Krishna's gift. Don't you know? I'm packaged, you know? Without too much problems, you're the problem. We think like that. And it, it's not, we don't want to judge that way of thinking because, as Prophet said in this purport, everyone is on a different level of realization. He so nicely speaks about that. Um, he says that, you know, Kunti, the prayers of Kunti indicate to us that every one of us are on different levels, at different times. And in order to honor where we all are, one thing that we do all have in common is that all of us are giving our lives in some way to wanting to know and love God. Love Krishna, right? All of us. No matter where, like what level we might be on in our Krishna consciousness. So therefore, we learned that there's only one thing, and I spoke about this the other day in class, that there's only one thing that can stop us from having that realization. There's one thing that stops us from remembering 
why we are doing what we're doing. What is that? Maybe I ask you. What is that one thing? It comes in different forms. But this one thing that really keeps us ground as we're endeavoring to serve. Offenses. Offenses. When we offend each other, then we just stay in a certain place. Because Krishna doesn't like that. Krishna doesn't like that. He doesn't he's like, you know, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. He wants us as as Quincy is describing to us. He wants us to understand all the difficulties that come to us, all the austerities that we're performing, is only to help us to get some clearings in our heart so that we can remember him. Remember the pastimes of, of the Lord. That's the, that's the only reason why we go through these things. Because our hearts are so much full of dust and dirt. And so in order to develop that type of affection, then Krishna arranges, or material energy arranges, different hurdles, so to speak, right? Different, different, um, like road stops, like we come. Like I was once in, uh, um, I was going, I was at the border, going across the border from, from um, Croatia, Croatia to, uh, the, the next city, next to Croatia. And at that time, the war was, had just finished, it wasn't that long after the war. And um, the, there was all the police, as you may know, at the border. Um, and when we got there, there was, there was a roadblock, there was a block for us to get through to Boston. We bust, but before Boston, there was another city, I can't remember now, it's been a while. But to get over to that other city, we had to go through all this block of police asking us all kinds of questions. And, you know, it, for us, coming from America, at least for me, it was kind of a little different because we weren't used to that. But then we realized this is the order of the day. This is how it works. You stop here and you cannot move from here until we have had all whatever documents or whatever, whatever, we can understand that you're not coming into this next country to create some confusion. So we, we went through that. And so then we went from, because Croatia and, what is the country? It's not Bosnia. It's Serbia. Serbia, it's not Serbia. Bosnia. Montenegro. 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 Okay. It might be Bosnia. Okay, so the one, the place where they were, uh, so we went into this other place, we went into, let's say it's Bosnia. Okay, maybe it is Bosnia. And, and then we were shocked. We realized, oh, the reason for the roadblock, the reason for us to have to go through all of this checking is because there's so much devastation on the other side. It was like, wow, all the buildings are blown out. And it, the, 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 the people, they didn't, they just looked like no, no smiles. There was no smiles, no happiness for the people. Because they were in shock. Because they'd just gone through this horrific experience. So we are like, wow. We have been through a horrific experience of entering into the Earth planet. And we come into this Earth planet and it's devastating for many of us. And then we have to us be together and we have to be loving with each other. And we need to be like this kind of perfect being when we're not. Because we have all these horrific things that we remember. And so teaches us that, yeah, let these horrific things come, let them keep coming. Because if they keep coming, then I'm just going to keep remembering Krishna. Because ultimately, what are we going to do? If we live in a place where we can't have affection for each other, then it's going to be empty like shadows. Right? Another time I remember going to Israel from Egypt. And you know, with the Bodhis, we're very, we, we don't take things so seriously. 
So we go to Egypt, and then from Egypt, we are like going into Israel. And we're not aware, like, oh, these two countries, right? They're simultaneously, they're like separate, different than each other. So we get to the Israeli side of, uh, we, actually, we flew. So we get to Israel, and there's 12 of us, there's 12 devotees with my spiritual master. And we get to Israel, and they're like the same block, right? You're coming from Egypt, and so they make sure they check all the passports, and it was a whole, again, keeping us to make sure. But a little me, right? Because I was born in America, and since then I became a citizen, because I realized, okay, I'm like, a, I'm like a, I am a child of the world. I will not be labeled by being in one place. So I realized, Go take care of whatever you need to do so you can be around, you can go around the world. So, so me, I, had, I still have my passport from my country where I was born, even though I had left there since I was a child. But I still have that passport. And so they, they kept me aside. So now my spiritual master and a lot of people, they got through, but they kept me, right? Because they can't find my country on their paper. That they have. So it's like, I don't exist. You know, my country don't exist. You don't exist. Like, who are you? You know, like, where are you from? And it's serious. I'm like, you're joking, right? <laughs> like, you're joking. You know, like, I had to come from somewhere. You know, they're like, it's not on our list. It's not on our list. And like, we, it's right. we had everything, you know. It wasn't on the list. So they had to do whatever they had to do to find out about my little country, which is like, it is a little spot. And then they said, it's how they able to find a way through. Similarly, in our lives, it's like that. Sometimes we have blocks, things come up, and it might take some intervention to move through it, right? The Israelis had to have some intervention. I don't know what they actually eventually did to find out what my country was. But I knew I was sitting there like a little kid, just like, okay, what's going to happen? What did it do to me? I don't, I don't belong anywhere. <laughs> That's you know. So, anyway, the point is, Kunti tells us, Srila Prabhupada is helping us, have various rep representatives that have come to help us, and the Dai Jai Prabhu is coming again to try to help again to awaken the heart, to remind us. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's, it's about remembering that Krishna is at the center of everything that we're doing. And so let's just all be Queen Kunti today. Who's going to be Kunti? Even the guys. Who's going to be Kunti? It's not about try. the body. We'll try. It's not about the body. It's about our consciousness. Like, yeah, yeah, who's going to be Kunti? Let's be Kunti. Let's be affectionate. Let's be caring. Let's be loving. Because the people that are coming, they will see. They will see if we are not, if we don't have that belief. Because human beings, you know, we 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 feel, we feel, and maybe sometimes we might not be as aware of our feelings, but we do. However, we do feel. So we so when people come, they feel what's in the atmosphere. And there are many sensitive people now. Many, many people are very sensitive. They don't have to be very rich in the bodies to be sensitive. So you want to have a mood that is welcoming, not externally, not superficially, but deep inside. So let's take the next few days to build that. Because we don't have it. We come from horrific situations. So let's take the time. Let's take the time to build that so that when people come, that when they leave, they're able to say, wow, that atmosphere, the devotees there, what they created for us, it's like, wow, I just want to come back. I want to come back, I want to come back. And that's, that's all we can do, is we can just show Krishna by our examples. That's all we can do. So I humbly, Thank you to please help me that I can be an example of bringing that atmosphere with all of you. I 
I thank you guys so much for including me in your family of devotees. I am so very blessed. I'm so proud to say I'm a part of the Russian Yasha. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Sincerely proud. So please help me. Thank you so very much. To Prabhupada. Yeah. Thank you.